So recently I came across a circuit that combines two interests of mine, analog computing and chaos theory. The circuit's purpose is to solve a system of nonlinear differential equations known as the Lorentz equations. These equations were first studied by Edward Lorentz while he was trying to model atmospheric convection. This model was particularly frustrating for Lorentz as his simulation, which is entirely deterministic, was yielding unpredictable solutions. Only later would Lorentz discover that these unpredictable outcomes were in fact due to seemingly insignificant changes in the initial starting conditions. Thus, chaos theory was born, and its focus was to study dynamical systems that have extreme dependence on initial conditions. The classic example given to describe dependence on initial conditions is the thought that the flap of a butterfly's wings occurring in a particular time and space, while seemingly insignificant, could be the difference between your home being destroyed by a hurricane or not at some later date. James Gleek has described chaos as order masquerading as randomness. The system only appears random because we, as observers, have no way of precisely measuring the initial conditions, nor do we have the ability to keep track of every cause and effect in a way that allows us to meaningfully predict the future. Let's look at a mechanical system that exhibits chaos. This is a double pendulum. Unlike the single pendulum that's highly predictable, by adding another pendulum, the system becomes so sensitive to initial conditions that we cannot predict the trajectory of the second pendulum beyond a few seconds. This is mind-blowing. This also gives rise to some interesting existential questions. If everything is deterministic and there is no randomness, then all of reality has already been determined from the initial conditions of whatever simulation you and I are in right now. In contrast, quantum theory says that the underlying nature of reality is a probability wave, meaning that reality is not deterministic, but probabilistic. In either case, this implies that the future is unpredictable and explains why we can't accurately forecast the weather beyond a couple of days or weeks. So back to the circuit. Here's a circuit that's been configured to set up an electronic analog of the equations shown on the left with the given constants sigma, rho, and beta. Sigma represents the Prandtl number, rho is the Rayleigh number, and beta is a geometric constant. At these values, or values very close to it, the system will exhibit chaotic behavior. X, Y, and Z are functions of time that can be visualized as coordinates in 3D space. Because these equations relate a function with its own derivative, op amps configured as integrators and summing junctions can be used to output the solution in the form of a voltage signal. For nonlinear systems where there are product terms, like what we have here, analog multipliers are required. The constant parameters can be set by using resistors, which in this case have all been scaled to 1 megaohm. There's a link in the description to a video that describes this exact circuit in more detail if you're interested. Analog computations are carried out by exploiting known physical properties of a material. In this case, the material properties of all the transistors that have been cleverly arranged within these op amps and analog multipliers, as well as all the resistors and capacitors, such that a solution can be measured by looking at voltages on the outputs. Here are the output voltages being plotted on an oscilloscope. The oscilloscope is set up to display the inputs in XY mode, with the inputs being Z of D versus X of T. The green illumination you're seeing is the trajectory of a point moving through space as determined by the equations, the constant parameters, and the initial conditions. The point moves between two basins of attraction, or attractors. Viewed from this angle, it coincidentally looks like a butterfly. As stated earlier, this is not the whole picture. The Lorentz attractor exists in three dimensions. Let's turn to our digital counterpart to view the attractor in 3D. In most of today's applications, digital computing wins out because of the many advantages it provides, such as immunity to noise, which is something that analog computers suffer dearly from. With that being said, it's still likely that analog computers will resurface in some form or another due to the rising need for economical supercomputers. In digital systems, we use numerical methods as opposed to analytical methods for solving ODEs, such as the Runga Kutta method. Here I will be using MATLAB's ODE45 solver to numerically solve the Lorentz equations and then generate a plot in 3D. Here we can see the simulation play out in a similar manner to what was seen on the oscilloscope. However, now the plot is in three dimensions with a rotating camera angle. And here's just the XZ plane showing the Lorentz butterfly. Okay, enough digital. Let's build the analog computer. Here's the circuit shown earlier that I've designed into a printed circuit board. You could just as easily breadboard this circuit, I just happen to like PCB designs.